Radio Raheem here with Robert, the Ghost Guerrero, interim title champion. You're a, you're a holder at 147. Now, even taking that step up two weight divisions to challenge for the title, a lot of criticism there. People were thinking, like, you know, that's not something we do in boxing. First of all, how did it feel to be able to accomplish that goal and now be standing here as, as a world title holder? Well, for one, people just don't do that. Um, you know, to criticize that, it's, uh, you know, it's funny, man. But, um, you know, I did take a lot of criticism. People thought I was going to get knocked out, that I wasn't going to be able to handle the 147-pound division, that I was going to be weak. Um, but, you know, I went out there and did it. Went out there, took care of business, uh, you know, took on one of the toughest guys in the division that nobody wanted to fight. Uh, you know, he was a mandatory to Berto, and Berto didn't want to fight him. But I said, bring him down. You know, my first fight back, it was, uh, you know, almost a year and a half I've been off. Just came off the shoulder surgery and jumped two weight classes and still took care of business. So, uh, you know, got that ring rest out of the way, and now it's time uh, to, to get it on with Berto. Now, fight fans are pretty unforgiving, but I think that they would, you know, give you room to take a, a tune-up fight or at least a victory lap after, like you say, having stepped up those weight divisions, uh, why immediately take on a challenge like Berto? I mean, you know, even though you say Berto didn't want to fight uh, Aiden, he's definitely got more fanfare. People would think that he's a better fighter. Why take on this challenge right away? Uh, because it's about taking on the best and tough guys. Um, you know, if you don't do that, it's a disservice to boxing fans. You know, it's about taking on the best fighters and wanting to be the best. Not just uh, get the title and then try to act like you're the best and pick and choose who you're going to fight. It's about fighting the best fighters that are out there, and that's what I'm about, is I want to fight those best fighters. I'm a throwback. You know, make the fights. Was make this, them. Was this fight an easy fight to make? Was, was Berto receptive? Um, yeah, he wanted the fight. Hey, let's make it happen. You know, uh, you know, my management, his management took care of business, and uh, you know, we're standing here right now ready to rock and roll. So at 147, I, mean, I know you believe you're going to win this fight. So assuming that you do, is this, are you home now? Is this where you're going to stay? Are you looking to climb any more weight divisions? Hey, you know what? If I have to, I will. Just put it that way. Uh, you know, if, uh, if I can't get the fights at 47, I'll move to 54. Um, like I said, it's about taking on the best fighters and, and wanting to be the best, not just, uh, you know, get to the spot and, just, and stay there and milk it and try to just get paid. I want to be the best uh, because if you, you fight the best, it's going to all be there no matter what. You've always said that you want to be considered and acknowledged as pound for pound best. What would you require, do you think, to get those kind of accolades? To have everybody stop hating. That's what it's going to require is everybody to stop hating. You know, I've went through six weight classes, won four <laughs> world titles in four different weight classes, jumped two weight classes, won the title. It's like... Why do they hate? Yeah. Why do you think they hate? I don't know. They just don't give credit where it's due. Uh, I guess because I'm a good guy. I'm a believer in God. Take care of my family. And uh, I guess it's just not appealing enough to people uh, uh, these days now. You got to be a guy uh, beating women, raping girls, cussing out everybody, fighting with everybody, you know, to, to, to be pound for pound top fighter. <laughs> Turning your attention to the fight ahead of you, Berto, it's only six weeks away. Uh, technically, people believe that Berto is a heavy-handed fighter, that he may give you trouble in that way, especially now that you're fighting at 147. Talk to me about how you intend to counter his power and generally what your strategy is going in to win this fight. Well, Berto, you know, he is a heavy-handed uh, right-hand puncher. Um, you know, he's very fast, very slick. He's a great counter puncher. Um, you know, you got to be prepared for all that. And uh, the one thing, uh, um, you know, coming up, uh, coming up in, in the pro game is, uh, you know, I've had all the fights I've needed to be prepared for this fight. Um, so it's not a matter of just preparing, uh, preparing in this training camp. It was preparing, uh, you know, throughout my career, different styles, tough guys, guys like Aiden who are big punchers with both hands, not just one, and who are brutal and just come and try to abuse you. Um, you know, the experiences. You put all your experiences together, you know, it's going to get you through the day. You guys don't seem to have any animosity. There's a lot of respect up there uh, at this press conference. But lastly, to be pound for pound best and to get that crowd on your side, the excitement, you got to knock guys out. No one's ever considered you a shrinking violet. Can you put this man down? Can you knock out Andre Berto? Oh, yeah. I mean, anybody could get knocked out in Boston. I don't care who it is. Um, you know, everybody knows Berto has a soft chin. You know, he's been hurt. He's been rocked a lot. He's been down by Victor Ortiz. So, uh, Everybody knows. I know. My team knows. We're capable of knocking him out. The Ghost. Radio Raheem with the Ghost. Robert Guerrero. Good luck, man.